Let me take you to your city of the future. You leave your house, and you're a little bit excited because you have a special day ahead of you. But as you leave your house, you realize once again how hot it is. It's sweltering hot. The sun is burning. There's hard surfaces, asphalt, concrete, glass. And you realize once again why it is that people don't have dogs anymore. Because you simply cannot walk them. It's too hot in the city. As you walk out into your street, you hear no birds. You hear no sounds. You hear no talk. You make your way to the nearest bus stop. You see a few other people. And then you wait for your people mover drone to take you to the other side of town, to the outskirts. And once again, you feel very uncomfortable and you're waiting for the air-conditioned space of the mover drone. You're in there, it takes you to the other side of town, to a building that has leaves on it. And together with a few other people, you're brought in. And you're really excited now because you're getting close to the experience that you've been waiting for for many years. You have to pass to security, two levels. They check you for sharp objects, for food, for water. You cannot bring anything. And then together with a few other people, you actually brought inside. And there it is, a magical being, the tree. Only one tree left in your city. And you touch its bark. You feel the wind blow through its leaves. You hear the rustling leaves. You smell the tree. You close your eyes and you realize that your grandmother's stories were true. Once there was a city with a lot of trees. Once there was a city that was green. Once there was a city that was cool. And as you dream away with your eyes closed, thinking about your grandmother who passed away a few years ago, your smartwatch buzzes and you have to leave again after a few minutes. And as you do that, you will cherish this moment forever but you also feel sad about returning to a city without trees. Well, this sounds very grim and very sad. Luckily, fortunately, we're still living in cities where we have trees. We live in cities where trees are keeping us company and providing us with many important benefits. But I ask you, do you really see the trees? Do you see them for the magical beings they are, for all the things they do for us? They keep us healthy. They keep us inspired, they cool the air, they host biodiversity. Do we really see them? Cities today are challenged much more than ever before. We're faced with climate change, with heat waves. Even cities in Northwestern Europe, the part of the world where I come from, have seen 40 plus centigrades during summer heat waves. Cities in the Middle East, are much warmer even, and people can hardly be outside of air conditioning these days. Cities in Brazil, even before summer has started, have reached the warmest temperatures ever. Cities are changing. Cities are becoming more unlivable. And we desperately need our trees to actually keep us alive and keep us happy and healthy. A recent study done by the Barcelona Institute of Global Health showed how important trees are for us. It showed that if we can reach 30% tree canopy cover in our cities, we could reduce the temperature in our cities with a few degrees, maybe even only 1.5 or 1.3 degrees. And that sounds like little, but because of shading, because of the cooling effect, that would actually save one third of the people who die prematurely during an, an, a heat wave. You would say one third. That's a lot of people. We had a few years ago a very big heat wave in Europe that cost tens of thousands of people's lives. We could have saved a lot of lives. So trees are really needed. We need to make sure that our cities are healthy. We need to make sure our cities are cool. And fortunately, we have trees who can actually help us do that. But how do we do that? How do we see trees? How do we make sure we can work with trees? There is luckily a global movement, a movement of bringing trees back into cities. It's driven by academics, by politicians, by not-for-profits, by governments, by passionate citizens, by the young and the elder. That movement is sometimes called urban forestry. Urban forestry is my field, and it really means that we look at the city as a forest. We see that people and trees are one unit, one whole, and together we can create cities in good ways. Urban forests are there for us. They're there for trees. 
they're really important in a way to bring us forward. There was a girl in Amsterdam, a Jewish girl called Anne Frank. She was hidden, hiding from the German army, the occupiers. And as we know, her life didn't end very well. But what she had was a tree just outside her window, her doorstep tree, a horse chestnut tree that actually gave her the chance to keep in contact with nature, to see the rhythms of nature, the beauty of nature. And she writes about the tree in her diary. She writes about it flowering. She writes about how much she longs back to be outside again. Anna Frank and her doorstep tree. There was a philosopher in ancient Greece called Plato. And Plato realized that the best way to teach his students was not to be in a classroom, but to be among the trees, the olive trees, the fig trees, and jointly to learn, to, to have a discourse of learning and sparring and, and learning new knowledge. So he was in his urban grove just outside of Athens. There was a man in a village close to the village where I live in the Netherlands. He decided to create a little forest in his own garden. He put a lot of trees in there. And his neighbors started wondering, what is this man doing? And they started to do the same and started to think, maybe together we can make a street wood. And the street wood will actually bring us together as neighbors. We can be under the trees. We can celebrate under the trees. That man could have been you. You could, you could make that street wood. So doorstep trees, urban groves, street woods is just one of the ways in which we can bring the urban forest back in which we can radically regreen our cities now that we need it most. The reality is that we're losing trees. We're losing canopy cover. We're losing especially big trees, those trees that are the most important for our mental health, for our mental well-being. Doorstep trees, urban growth, street woods. How can we make those happen? Not so long ago, I launched a new idea, a new rule, an evidence-based rule for the greening of cities by rediscovering trees. I call it the 330-300 rule. Or sometimes I call it trees for trees, or the magic trees for trees. It talks about everybody being able to see three large trees from your home, from your school, from your workplace, maybe from your hospital if you're in the hospital. It calls for at least 30% tree canopy cover in every single neighborhood so that we be cooler and happier. It also calls for never more than 300 meters to walk to your nearest park or forest or green space of a high quality where you actually can enjoy different types of activities. And together, of course, 330, 300, based on the latest research, brings trees and green space into our lives again. The magic trees are actually picked up across the world now. And I ask also for your help in doing this in your neighborhood, in your city. Talk to your politicians to make sure that they understand the importance of trees. It can be done. In Malmö, Sweden, the city government adopted the 330-300 rule as part of its official plan, its master plan. And they're now planting trees, especially in the most vulnerable parts of the city, where people are poorer, where they have less trees, where they have more problems with health and climate change. Or a little town close to Perth in Australia called Mount Pleasant, where a group of citizens had been trying for many, many years to get a new neighborhood park. And then they found the 330-300 rule. They went to the politicians and they said, hey, no, we need a park. And they got their park. Or developers in the Netherlands who are now building new neighborhoods that they call 330-300 neighborhoods because they realized the importance of having trees and green in the city, in the area, for climate adaptation, for health, for biodiversity, for healthier and happier people. So we can do this. We can actually make our neighborhoods greener and better by the trees, by the doorstep trees, or doorstep trees, the urban groves, the street woods. But it will require a joint action. It will require that we have citizen groups working together. It will require that everybody will try to find a way of developing doorstep trees and street woods. It will require that we implement some of the best knowledge available of not only planting trees, but especially also of managing trees. We can do it together. And the good thing is that in that way, we can create neighborhoods that are very different. And we do that in a way that will create a future city that looks like this. Remember once a future city.
you're there, you're walking out of your window or your house, and you greet your doorstep tree, be it an ancient Jinko, a trustworthy sycamore, a vibrant fig, or maybe one of those lonely pines. You touch its barks as you bark as you walk out into the street, into your street wood, which is leafy and shady, and you take a moment to step up and to talk with your elderly neighbor, and you let the trees be part of your conversation. You walk through your street wood to a nearby urban grove where you hear the sound of children playing and talking. And you realize that you live in a city that is a green city. You see the trees, you live with the trees, you live with your neighbors. And you realize that it's true that what is sad sometimes, that a tree on your doorstep is a forest in your mind. You live in a city that you can call a forest city. You live in a city that makes you happy and healthy. And you live in a city where trees and people truly connect.